going on, Warriors? Time for another episode of Vigor Warriors 2 and the 1% Club. I felt I did it, wanted to do one this morning. Uh, I know I did one last night and talking about the uh, three years, but I want to kind of do one because we had some interesting comments last night and I kind of approached those and then we'll get back on track. Uh, probably this evening I'll do another one. But uh, let's go ahead and thank you all for the comments, um, likes, donations. It's wonderful. I appreciate that. Uh, there's three comments I wanted to kind of focus on and we'll make one we'll do uh, for Luke here because he, he gives an interesting question and I didn't really think about this a lot because I'm really... I really haven't focused a lot on the wording dervishes, um, but he makes a very interesting point. I want to kind of address that. I found some information on it that might help, at least from perspective that that I have with it. But Tellison, um, he asked a question about change in hair text, texture and density. Yes, one of the benefits of, of, in my opinion, retention is the idea that your hair will get stronger you won't you won't be getting it a problem this is why i think i've been able to get the beard that i have i didn't have a beard many of you may have seen some of my earlier videos but um i didn't have a beard you know for 57 58 years you know so i decided to get a beard i took it off at one point i've kept it on now and i'll probably keep it on for a long time because um i like i like it and a lot of benefits i think to the, having a beard and things like that so but uh, i think there is truth in what you're saying tell us in and i think that's a good observation uh jake speaks also has a good uh, a topic as well i'm gonna kind of start the car for a second here but uh jake speaks talks about the fact of upgrading and i talked about this a little bit yesterday upgrading and uh the thing is is that uh there's a good and bad side to it of course when you're upgrading you know it means i can kind of have better production and not on this not on the phone and do those type of things in a studio things like that but i think he also mentions a good point is one of the things i'm trying to do is kind of indicate that i don't need a lot of those glitzy things i'm not really interested in that you can kind of look at other stations if you want a good to have good you know um you know graphics and all that and teaching for many years i know how effective that can be but my, my goal right now is not to make money on this. My goal is not to kind of sell you a product. Uh, I mean, except for Kelder's book, which I think is a great book, you know, and the whole idea of retention and brahmacharya, sophism, cel cel celibacy. I guess you could say I'm trying to sell that. But what I'm trying to do is really kind of indicate to you that this is a lifestyle change that's been effective for me. And so I definitely think for any man who wants to become a man, a, a strong masculine male, this has got to be in your repertoire as a warrior. And so I think Jake makes a good point is that I'm trying to kind of keep it really simple. I don't really, I want to make the message the key thing here, not me or anything around me or the graphics and this kind of stuff. You know, I see sometimes people put on little pictures of, you know, different figures and things like that. I'm not going to do that. I give it to you the way I, I see it only because I've experienced certain things and I like to kind of share that and you guys can kind of take that for what it is. So Jake makes a really good point. I'm not that, I'm a little leery going into all that at this point because I want to make it simple and down to earth so that you guys kind of see really the content that we're talking about rather than all the the, the, the glitz and things like that, which I don't think is effective at this point. Men need the answer. Men need the solution to me and this is the solution. All right, now Luke. Uh, let's talk about the topic here. And Luke, we're talking about uh, clockwise and counterclockwise when it comes to Kelder's first right when it comes to this. Now, I have an article, and I probably will at least put it down here, talking about, this is from the new, the five Tibetans. Uh, which direction, this is from 2019, which direction should I spin? So, obviously we know what Kelder's saying is that you should stand erect with arms outstretched, horizontal with the shoulders. Spin around now until you likely become slightly dizzy. One caution, you must turn from left to right, clockwise. In other words, you're placing a clock or watch on the floor facing you, you would turn in the same direction the hands are moving. And this is in Kelder's book, also the Eye of Revelation. I think it was another book that he put out there. Um, and, you know, all kinds of uh, ancient anti-aging secrets of the five Tibet rites. He doesn't talk about the sixth one. I don't know if that, I, I haven't looked at that book, but uh, I know with the Fountain of Youth, there was a sixth one that really is one we're focusing on, and that's seen with attention. Now, it says Colonel Bla Bradford, who's a, per who's a character that's used in the book, defines clockwise being the direction in which the person turns when facing forward, 
and turning from left to right, regardless of the location on the planet, okay? Now, some people have suggested otherwise, right? They suggest that due to the Coriolis effect, water will spin counterclockwise when draining from a sink in the southern hemisphere. Therefore, the theory goes, the same should apply to the human body. And the question is, is there any substance to this idea? Now, we're gonna go by, back with a couple different, uh, different people here. Uh, Alistair B. F uh, Frazier, who's a PhD emeritus professor at, of meteorology at Penn State University, uh, compared the rotations to the ones usually seen, the tires on a traveling automobile, a compact disc playing music, a CD, or a draining sink. The rotation of the Earth is very small, one rotation per day. The water to sink may make rotation a few seconds, and so rotation rates 10,000 times higher than the Earth. Therefore, it should not be surprising to learn that the of force is the order of magnitude smaller than any of the forces involved in everyday spinning. What they're saying is that this effect is very small, and this effect is not, not something that overrides the effectiveness of the clockwise. So going counterclockwise is not that effective. So basically, the article is saying this correlative force is so small that it plays no significant role in the direction of rotation of the sink or CD or anything else. And that's why, that's why it's not really that important to go clock, counterclockwise. I always have gone uh, clockwise. I feel that it's something that's really important. And since I've been doing this in 1998, I've had great effects, and so I'm not gonna change it. But I understand a lot of the controversy here. And so the article continues talking about the coronavirus effect. We don't need to really go that much into it. But they also talk about other things that are possible influences. I wanna kinda of focus on these for a couple minutes. So one is the spin direction of chakras. Now, Bradford didn't talk a lot about that except for saying that the body has uh, seven centers, which could be called vortexes, magnetic centers. Uh, revolve at great speed and healthy body, but when slow down, well, that's just another name for old age, health, and senility. So what he's talking about is chakras actually slow down if you're not doing exercises, you're not working them. This is why those five exercises plus the sixth one actually gets energy to move in those chakras. And so as you do those type of things, your chakras will keep moving at a pace. And so you're going to kind of slow down the aging process, which makes you use, look a lot more youthful. And I believe, uh, you know, a lot better condition and shape. Um, and so the idea is, is that what you're saying really here is that the idea that is the chakras basically are healthy. When you're healthy, you're going into a clockwise type of, of movement. I believe when you're unhealthy, the chakras are unhealthy, that's when you go into a, a counterclockwise until you can get them healthy. So Barbara Ann uh, Brennan, who is an ex-NASA uh, research scientist, uh, talks about the fact that the human energy field believes that healthy chakras should spin in a clockwise direction and the closed unbalanced chakras spin in a counterclockwise, a counterclockwise direction. So she's got a book called Hands of Light. I probably will put a reference on that as well. Uh, when the chakras are functioning normally, each will be open, which is what we're, we're trying to achieve every day, make sure they're open. Spinning clockwise and metabolize to metabolize, I'm sorry, um, to, to metabolize the particular energy needed from the universal field. So clockwise spin draws energy from the universal energy field into the chakras, very much like the right hand rule in electromagnetism, which states that a changing magnetic field around a wire will induce a, a current in that wire. So when the chakras spin counterclockwise, the current is flowing outward from the body, thus inter inter uh, interfering with a metabolism. Um, in other words, the energies that are needed and the ones we experience as psychological reality are not flowing into the chakras when spinning counterclockwise. We label the chakras closed in coming energy. So that means then, what it, what's basically said is metabol, met, metabolism, <laughs> can't even say that word today, but the idea is that as, the, as you're doing counterclockwise, the chakra is closing, and it's not metabolical uh, in, in your nature. When your chakras are opening and you're spinning uh, in the clockwise direction, 
you have an open type of thing, uh, open type of thing, and that's where you continue to get benefits from, and that's what I've been doing for the last, you know, what is it, 20, almost uh, 1997, 90, so it's almost 25, uh, more than 25 years. The third example was the clockwise um, walk of the uh, the Buddhist monks, the Tibetan Buddhist monks, walking around religious items. The artifact talks about the fact that uh, Tibetan uh, Buddhists walk around religious artifacts like sacred mountains in a clockwise direction to show their devotion and accumulate merit. So that's another one of those things is indicating that a lot of the Tibetan uh, Buddhists kind of in these these are articles and things we're seeing move in more of a clockwise direction. So I think that's also um, very important. Um, so that you can kind of take a look at this and uh, um, the uh, the other one I guess you can mention too is Tibetan prayer re wheels, and it, it's all kind of moving. The practitioner spins at the the wheel clockwise in the direction that they want the mantras are written. So again, all those type of things um, are important. And I think it's important to understand that uh, when you look at these things, um, you know, it's, it, it's kind of important to look at this way. So as, it, as, you know, as you look at this, I think you have to kind of decide upon yourself a little bit to decide which one you really kind of want to look at. I really feel like it's been useful to me I guess I would not have started these things back in 1998 if I didn't see an advantage of it. I think as certainly I started doing it, I found tremendous advantage to it uh, and, and trying to spin in that direction, and it just kind of helped me overall. Now, would I change this point? Now, I said a few minutes ago, I'm not really going to change. I think the whole idea is to me is to keep the benefits and things I'm doing now, and so it's working for me. I would definitely go with Kelder's idea. I think there's a lot of uh, information you could go back and forth with, and um, you know this is probably why I'm not doing Whirling Dervishes stuff, and I'm doing more of the Kelder's book because it has been working for me for 26 years, and I'm not going to really stop now in doing it. So, I hope it helps, Luke. That's a great point you made, and I'm I'm sorry I did not catch that. I missed that myself in looking through it. And I'm glad you mentioned it because I didn't really look that much information up as far as the actual spinning and everything goes with the whirling dervishes. I had some basic information to it, but I didn't realize it was a big difference there. So I think that uh, it's a good point you're making. And like I said, I mean, I go back with the Tibet, you know, Buddhist and, and the, the effect it had on their aging and all that kind of stuff. And uh, that's important to me. So uh, it's a good question. And like I said, I don't have a definite answer, but I can give you the information that I gave you about why, why the Tibet monks uh, and the, um, the Buddhists uh, do that. All right, my friends, as always, two things we always leave you with. And we'll do probably another one tonight on going back to our topics that we had. But I wanted to kind of get this one through. So two things. One, every day is a new day to a great warrior. And continue, my friends, to battle on!